we've got an amazing story about a Frenchman stranded in the African desert in his little French car. This is the Citroën de Chevaux, except two of the wheels are busted. He uses the remaining two wheels and rebuilds this car into a motorcycle that he uses to ride back to civilization with. I think we should get ourselves a 2CV and try it ourselves. Absolutely. It's a tall tale of French transformation. Supposedly, using nothing but hand tools and hope, a working motorcycle was made from a broken down car. But before any mechanical metamorphosis, the guys must start out by meeting the motor car from the myth, a 67 Citroen. All right, picking up some speed here. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> Whoa. Now, this is the actual car we are going to be turning or trying to turn into a motorcycle. This car feels insane. It was originally conceived of by a Frenchman named Pierre Jules Boulanger in 1935, but went into production in 1948. Come on, give me all your power. Between then and 1990, they made over 3.2 million of them. And his 425cc engine puts out a blistering 12 horsepower. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you the Citroën de Cheval. Nice dubs, homie. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> it's clearly not fast or furious. But for this motorcycle from Car Conundrum... Let's inspect. See what's going on under the hood here. It'll be the car's adaptability that's key. Where's the engine? <laughs> I have to say, if ever there was a car for turning into a motorcycle, it is this baby right here. And once you look under the hood, you can see why there's very little there. I'm genuinely excited about getting our hands dirty in this thing and seeing what we can make happen. So what are you thinking? Well, we've run it through its paces and we know what it looks like mechanically. I can't think of anything else except for taking this out, stranding ourselves and seeing if we can turn it into a motorcycle. All right then, road trip. All right. Here we go. Off to Africa. <laughs> the French man in the myth got stranded in Morocco. Oh, man. I think there's vultures circling overhead. But Adam and Jamie's Saharan substitute is a little closer to home. Nice little workspace. Flat, desolate, perfect. Prior to this experiment, all we know is that it's cute and it's pretty basic. But like any normal car, it also has four wheels and an engine under the hood in the front. And somehow, we're going to have to reconfigure it to where we just use two of those wheels and all the necessary components to be able to power it and steer it in such a way that we can drive it, motorcycle fashion. I'm gonna go grab the tool kit. Okay. In the myth, the guy is stranded with nothing but a 2CV and a bunch of standard hand tools. All right, sir, we've got a jack, hacksaw, and we are gonna be replicating exactly that. Screwdrivers, See wrenches. Perhaps the very first thing we're going to be testing is, can you even take this car apart with this simplicity? Having so few tools would seem like a hindrance. But with this car, maybe not. Uh, how's this held on there? Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a nice start. If the whole car is like that, then we're on free. Once the hood's literally been slid off, Adam, it looks like all this stuff comes off that way. No way. It's soon joined by the doors. <laughs> Who built this thing? <laughs> Next come the seats. Well, now we've got a place to sit and have some lunch. Also without any tools being touched at all. Wow. And while a few parts do need a helping hand... I've already got the bumper half off. Ho, ho, ho. 
Ah, ah. Oh, there we go. Mostly, it's a case of unlock and unload. I've never worked on a vehicle anything close to this. This is, this is so basic, it's actually quite wonderful. Taking just 60 minutes, Nice. it <laughs> is an encouraging start. Yeah. But stripping back the car was never going to be the tough task. OK. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That belongs to transforming what's left into a motorcycle. Now, we rocketed through removing all the stuff that we didn't need. But at this point, taking it the rest of the way, actually removing two of the wheels and making it into something like a motorcycle, I don't have a clue how we're going to do it. Without doubt, there's a lot to do. The challenge is, is fairly significant. We've got this heavy thing, an engine, which weighs hundreds of pounds, and it's meant to drive two wheels that are way off center to the engine. But on a motorcycle, the engine needs to be in the center of gravity. So we have to figure out some way to get the engine as close to center as possible while still driving a wheel so we have power. And how that's going to work, I have no idea. Um. There's two key conundrums, how to provide power to a central drive wheel and how to do that without moving the engine. So, sir, I guess it's time to start talking about how we're going to get this thing balanced on a, on a single line. I know. Uh, I'd love to leave the engine where it's at and have, like, a wheel there and a wheel here. What do you, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, I do, actually. Uh, these things here are the output shafts, right? right. So if that was simply placed right on a, a wheel, well, um, just having that a braid on oh, the wheel. Oh, a braid on the wheel. It, it could drive the wheel. Ah. Oh, dude, you know what I realized? We'd rather have the engine in the rear of the bike, so we're not trying to move the whole engine. And that actually works with the abrasion technique, because it means the engine's running in the opposite direction yeah. than the wheel. So we can go in first gear and go that way. Well, where a little while ago we had no freaking idea what we are going to do, now at least we have a plan of attack towards investigating a possible solution. That feels like somewhere. We've got our car frame with the engine at the front and the two wheels on each side. We're going to start by discarding two of those wheels and reattaching the other two as close to the center line as possible. The wheel under the engine will be the drive wheel, and we're basically going to shove it right up against the engine's output shaft so when the shaft spins, the wheel will also turn. Now, the wheel will actually be turning in the opposite direction of the output shaft, which means that the thrust vector is reversed. In other words, the back of the car is going to become the front of the bike. At least, that's the theory. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. It's a plan that is undoubtedly complex. Nice. Excellent. But without access to power tools. Ready? Uh-huh. OK. Having the engine stay put is imperative. All right. Want me to get this thing up and in? I guess now's as good a time as any. <laughs> and after three hours of non-trivial teamwork. OK. Three, two, one. <laughs> the design is starting to take shape. There we go. OK, okay. down. There we are. Uh, bingo. Bingo. Now we can finally explain what we've been talking about this whole time, and you can see it in action. We've taken one of the swing arms from the back of the car and put it on the front, which is the new back of the car. Bear with me. That swing arm brings the tire underneath the frame where it is pressing into this, one of the output shafts from the engine. Now, that output shaft goes in this direction because this was the former front of the car, but it drives the wheel in that direction because this is the new rear of the car. And the groove lines up beautifully with this ridge on the output shaft. Will this make the bike run? I, I'm, I'm not willing to say just yet, but I'm hopeful. With the untested drivetrain in place, the guys move forward, literally. Oh, baby, don't fail me now. Here we go. Adam's hacking through the car's rear wheel swing arm. Oh my god, this is like breaking out of jail. <laughs> so that it'll hook securely onto the front of the frame. <laughs> oh my gosh. Starting to look like a motorcycle. <laughs> 